So let me start while uh, Roberto brings the slides up by thanking Roberto and Gigi also uh, to set up this meeting in this beautiful building and this beautiful room here. I feel much smarter just standing here. Okay, um, so a little less than a year ago, um, Patrick asked uh, Christian and myself to organize the Higgs efforts uh, for FCCEE. And so our objective there, and I still to refine and expand on the, the Higgs program. Um, but also, while doing this, identify the dependencies in the detector design and the machine requirements. I think this is in this early phase of a rather important part. And form a collaborative effort, meaning bringing people together and allow them to discuss the physics of Higgs physics of FCC. Um, I think after this first year, we are you know, moving away now from this first exploration phase into a more uh, you know, a study period. That is not to say that no studies have happened. There are quite some studies have happened. It also doesn't mean that we, are stopping, we will stop exploring. But I think it's now time to use uh, the tools which were developed. Um, for example, the, the analysis framework which has been developed and start using this. This will also allow us to have a more closer collaborative effort moving forward. Um, Gigi said, I think, on the first day of the workshop that, you know, you know, he wants to, you know, give a project to the students. We have plenty of projects for students. Um, so Christian, in the last um, workshop in Paris, presented our work package. Um, this is given in this talk and also on the on the on the tricky. So if you, you know, I need for a, a project for a student, you know, please come and talk to us or have a look there. There's really plenty to do in this talk. What I want to do is talk about some of the highlights and things which are ongoing right now um, and just show, show a little bit what's, what, what is cooking without talking too much about the specific results. Um, so yes, I mean, the Higgs physics uh, potential of FCC is, uh, is given by the large um, size of the Higgs sample. Um, we've studied the Higgs precision uh, measurement in the T-Lab phase um, a case study a report, and you can see there very well that you know, we can measure the cross section with a sub percent precision and then uh, subsequently the branching ratios times cross section with high precision. Um, this is true to the fact that we have those 2 million Higgs bosons here. This is uh, um, in 10 Autobahn, inverse Autobahn of data, which corresponds to about five years with five, four experiments. Um, so you have this huge sample, but you can use the sample then and the precision also to other, to other things. Uh, one cute thing I thought was uh, a finding by Matthew, I don't want to pronounce his last name, make, make something, <laughs> Matthew, uh, who found that you know, having this position on the, on the Higgs uh, cross-section, you can actually infer information through loop corrections on the Higgs self-coupling uh, with a reasonable precision. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, due to the high luminosity, we can start studying first and second generation Higgs coupling using this machine, looking at rare decays, exotic decays, extra Higgs boson, and explore more the tensor structure of the Higgs boson itself. And this list is not even uh, complete here. So, to the first generation couplings, um, we didn't have a dedicated talk in this meeting, so I just want to remind you that you know, we have this unique opportunity to study uh, in S-channel production, the coupling of the Higgs boson to electrons, almost. The first studies show that we have uh, sensitivity very close to the, to the standard model um, sensitivity. One of the key points in this measurement is that we explore all possible Higgs final states, and there's difficult backgrounds, and the rates are not very large. Um, out of the study, there's a number of questions which come up, which have to do with, uh, you know, the, de the precise setting of the machine and so on, and more so, you know, what are we actually measuring? How large are the, uh, the loop correction to this coupling? Um, and then you can turn around, because we don't have standard model sensitivity, you can ask yourself, you know, how can you actually modify the coupling to have an enhanced coupling to which you might have sensitivity? Um, uh, experimentally, one of the questions is, do we know the Higgs mass precisely enough to actually you know, half E plus C minus collision at the right energy, or do we actually have to do something like a, a, a scan of the, uh, you know, of the center of mass energy to find the Higgs? So it seems like we don't need to do this, but we need to follow up and make sure that we do understand how precisely we can measure the Higgs mass. Um, then, you know, the overall question, how much luminosity is available? Let's start with the question how much time you want to invest, but also 
um, how much, for example, this is a more detailed question, how much is the luminosity reduced when we use uh, uh, monochromators in order to you know, make the beam um, more narrow? And then one of the questions is how, how much can we polarize the beam in order to use the polarization in order to uh, increase, again, the sensitivity? So those are questions which, which you know, need to be followed up, also in discussion with the machine experts, of course, in order to figure this out. Uh, the next topic is, and this was discussed in this meeting by, by Yotam, uh, just very briefly, um, the coupling to light quarks. He pointed out that we can do this in an uh, inclusive way by, by taking jets or in an exclusive way by using vector, moson, uh, vector mesons. And he pointed out that the rho gamma channel is the most promising one. Here, why do I bring this up here? It's because you know, the, the jet flavor tagging um, is one of the drivers for the position we need in, in V tagging and charm tagging and maybe uh, uh, you know, the differentiation between quark and gluon jets and so on. And so this is one of the areas where we can, if we can play with different detector scenarios and compare those and see what the effect is on the performance of such a measurement. Okay, rare and exotic decays. This is you know, ongoing. <coughs> so we have those two million the Higgs events or even more maybe. Um, if we, we only have those events for studies of rare decays and exotic uh, possible decays, if we use the hydronic and invisible um, Z decays as well. And that itself then sets a requirement again on the detector because we want to resolve, we want to use the recoil in order to text the events as requirements and on, the, on the calorimeters mainly. So this needs to be, uh, this needs to be checked and optimized probably. Um, we have sensitivity to those rare decays by doing standard models should have written standard model me coupling measurements here. So this is one way to approach this, but sensitivity there is limited. So having studies for the dedicated final state will improve this, um, this sensitivity. Um, you know, the, one of the prominent examples is probably Higgs to invisible decays, um, but we can further explore Higgs to uh, flavor violating Higgs um, or <coughs> many, many more modes. There's a list here, given which is out of this paper, this one here, which is a detailed studies of, well, this paper was more written in order to motivate studies at the LHC, but this is also useful here where those final states are actually illustrated. If you look at this paper, you see that there's, for every of those final states, there's a theoretical motivation and also an estimation of at least the LHC sensitivity. Um, I, you know, working on one of the LHC experiments as well, I have to say that we didn't really fully explore the LHC potential here, but in principle, those branch and ratios, those, those studies are limited in the sensitivity to the branch and ratios and to those modes just because we have large backgrounds to deal with. So it's not possible to measure those things with, um, with branch and ratios up to the 10 to the minus 5 kind of level at the LHC. Um, in some cases, for example, the Higgs to gamma missing energy channel can be limited to bunch and ratios above the percent level. So here, using the large data set at FCCEE will allow us to probe those exotic Higgs decays so with much higher, much, much, much higher precision. So this needs to be looked into. Um, so what's currently happening is just systematically going through those channels and figuring out what, which are the, the key channels where the LHC actually has very limited sensitivity, and then we will further explore those with dedicated studies. But in principle, all of them can be actually studied and, and looked at. Okay, a completely different story is the P measurements. Um, so I think we have quite some confidence that the data we are looking at is, you know, we are looking at a CP even. Uh, even, even state. So, but the question is, could there be an admixture of a CP, CP odd um, part to this? So you can do this looking at um, Higgs to V, v um, the Higgs to, studying the Higgs to VV coupling, meaning uh, Z bosons or Ws. Um, <coughs> in this normal process in ZS, we reviewed the status of, of studies like this, and we came up with this plot here, which compares the LHC and uh, E plus E minus machines. This, um, Parameter this FCP is the, the ratio of the of the CP odd amplitude over the sum of the amplitudes. So you see you have quite some sensitivity already 
at the LHC, you see different points here correspond to different modes, either of the Higgs decay or the Higgs production via vector boson fusion or Higgs production in association with the Z boson. Um, but you see also that at a plus or minus machine, you can push this even further. This is here done for um, the ILC. Um, similarly, you can study, and very interesting, the decays to Taus. Uh, you can, you know, here have a, a mixture between CP odd and CP even. So you have this mixing angle delta here, which can be measured. There is some estimates in the literature available. Um, I don't think anybody here is involved in the, they're an interesting study, but they are also a little bit naive in the sense that, for example, for the LHC backgrounds are completely mis, uh, mis, mistreated there. Um, nevertheless, and also no systematics are included in the study. Um, so nevertheless, they think this is an interesting thing to approach, and they show in their paper how to actually approach such a measurement at the LHC, and they think that you can uh, measure this mixing angles up to about 11 de uh, degrees. There is a study also available for the ILC with one autobahn, I should say. This study here is done for uh, 250 GeV. It's rather important because in per luminosity you get more Higgs bosons to study. And you can see here an accuracy of 4.4 degree can be reached. And then <coughs> the authors of this paper also translated then this study into a study for a circular machine uh, with different um, luminosities at 240 GeV, I think. Um, and you see that the, the um, sensitivity here is uh, you know, even improved. There is no such study for FCC at this point. We are exploring this. Um, by again looking at the hydronic tau decays and then uh, probably also going to repeat the measurements or studies which have been performed in the context of the ILC. Okay, so in summary, um, we are exploring the Higgs physics potential beyond what we wrote up in the T-Lab physics case study. Um, so this talk just, just gave you a few highlights of things which I know are going on. There is more work going on and you, every now and then you see a paper coming up which references the FCCEE, uh, so people are just doing this on their own grounds, which is, I don't, I don't mind this at all, as long as the studies are properly done and give references. Um, and we're exploring the requirements and constraints on the detector and the machine. Um, one of the important points here is, for example, the, again, the, the S-channel production, where there's a uh, tight connection to the uh, a machine setup. Uh, and I pointed out that, you know, for example, the flavor tagging is rather important uh, in the connection with the detector itself. Um, one of the things, I mean, that we have many, many more ideas of, you know, than we have uh, manpower to actually pursue those. So, you know, we are constantly in need of people, actually students, for example, from here, who could do those studies. Um, and again, uh, if you want to look and get a better overview of the, of the larger program, please have a look at the work package uh, in Christian's talk or on the tricky, but that's it. About the CP admixture that you mentioned in the end, you say this is work in progress and you will get numbers on the precision that can be achieved like the ones that are shown in the plot? This is I cannot tell you that we will get the same numbers. So. No, but you're working on getting numbers, yes, so that's what I mean. The, the, the approach is actually a study I'm doing myself. So the approach is to actually uh, use an, a, a new novel method in order to get the, uh, you know, to explore, in this case, three I mean, the three-body decays, the three-prong decays. But I will also just look at what exactly those people did. But you look into the Tau Tau channel. In the Tau Tau channel, okay. yes. Well, if I remember Both correctly, do, the... Um, the precisions that can be achieved, the ILC numbers that I remember from the SNOMAS report, they were at the level where one would expect something, roughly at the level one would expect something from simple SUSY models or so. But it would be good if these uh, numbers could be improved, you know, if, if higher precision could be reached. I think it's necessary in order to really probe it. Take a little while to actually finalize this, but work is ongoing. Anyway, this is an example where the initial state polarization doesn't do anything for you, and it's the final state polarization which matters. And there are many such. I agree. I mean, the, the point is that we're looking for C, I mean, CP violation in the decay, so that's what we're actually after. Very good. So we can thank Marcos again.
We have coffee break now and we are back at 10.30.